The following reference images will be used to create the models in this video. Be sure to check out Clipart library and download them before starting this video. The links are in the description down below. Hi everyone, my name is Anyush Kanya and in this video I'm going to show you three methods to create snowflakes in Blender. Right now I'm uploading the reference images to Blender. I'm lowering the opacity of the images so that when we create the model we can see clearly what we are doing. Don't forget to rename the reference images so that we have a more organized workspace. For the first method, I've called it the vertex method because we are going to create a path of vertices so that when we join them together, the model will be created. I created a plane and deleted three of its vertices so that the last vertex will be used as a starting point of the path. I used GZ to move it upward to the top of the reference image. And then I used Ctrl and right click on the mouse to create the path following the line on the reference image. I repeated this process only on a single quadrant of the image so that when we use a modifier called the mirror modifier, the vertices will be mirrored to the left and down. And again, as a small reminder, I am using Ctrl and the right click on the mouse to create the path. And don't forget that if you are liking this video, be sure to subscribe and give a like. It would mean a lot to me and help support my channel. After I finish creating the path, I go back to object mode and apply a subdivision surface modifier by typing Ctrl plus 1. This will help me smoothen out the vertices and create a smoother path. If you see that some vertices are out of the line, you can grab each one of them individually and position them in the correct place. I'm doing so by just clicking on each vertex individually and pressing G to move it around. After making sure the vertices follow the path correctly, I add a mirror modifier and I habilitate the X and Z axis and I also check the clipping marks so that the vertices don't get away from each other. Be sure to always check that all the vertices that you create are following the path as closely as possible and don't be afraid to move them and take your time to make them follow the path correctly. I now will apply the modifiers from top to bottom and then go to edit mode and press F to fill out the shape. To add a little bit of thickness to the model to make it 3D, I'm going to add a solidify modifier and increase its thickness. I'm going to shade smooth the model by right clicking and pressing shade smooth and be sure to auto smooth the normals. But what if you wanted to add a little bit more volume to the model? To do so, you can add two loop cuts on the model and press ALT S to make the model thicker. And there we have it, the first snowflake using the vertex method. Don't forget to rename your model to snowflake1. In this mesh method, I will be creating this snowflake by using a mesh. The purpose of this method is to use a plane and to resize it and extrude it to follow the reference image. 
I will be using the same method as the vertex method to mirror the model so that we only work on a quadrant and it will be mirrored on the left and downside of the model. I first added a plane and positioned it on a snowflake branch. I divided it in half and then I deleted one side of the model so that when I add the modifier it would be mirrored to each side. Now I'm adding the necessary loop cuts by pressing Ctrl R so that when I extrude the vertices to the top side of the snowflake they would be positioned according to the reference image. I'm moving them by selecting them and pressing G. To extrude them I am selecting the vertices and pressing E and moving them with G to the correct place. I will be repeating the same process so that the mesh fills the whole reference image. If when you finish the extrusion you find that some vertices don't follow the reference image, you can grab them individually and move them by pressing G. I am now going to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to move it to the top of the modifier stack and I'm going to apply both of them. You may notice that after you apply the modifiers, some of the vertices may have been separated. But that's no problem because you can select the vertices, press M on the keyboard and mesh them together. Don't forget to add the solidify modifier and increase its thickness to add some volume to the model. I will also shade smooth it and auto smooth the normals. If you still find that there are some separated vertices on the model, be sure to check them out, merge them together and after you've merged them, be sure to apply the solidify modifier. To add more volume to the model, add two loop cuts and resize them by pressing Alt S on the keyboard. And now we finish the second snowflake model by using the mesh method. Now we are going to create the last snowflake model using the curves method. This is one of my favorite methods because it gives you the freedom to create any shape you want. To get started, add a Bezier curve, go to edit mode and delete all of the vertices by selecting them and pressing X and delete vertices. Then you select the pen on the left side of the toolbar and when you select this tool, this will help you draw any shape you want following the reference image. And basically the method consists on drawing the path following the reference image. This is a time lapse of how I drew the whole path. 
Don't forget that if you make a mistake, you can press Ctrl Z to go backwards by one step. After finishing the drawing process, I go back to object mode and I apply the mirror modifier. Don't forget to also check the clipping checkbox so that the vertices stay together. I will then now select all of the vertices and move them so that they fit more properly how the reference image looked like. I will then go now to the bevel properties and increase the depth so that the curve gains some thickness. I will then apply the mirror modifier one more time, shade smooth it and you can resize the depth to whatever size you want the snowflake to be. Don't forget that in order for the mirror modifier to be applied, you need to convert the curve to mesh. I mesh by distance the vertices to remove any double vertices. And then I resize the whole snowflake by selecting everything and pressing Alt S. You can mesh the vertices by going to Mesh, Cleanup and Mesh by Distance. You can also delete any loose vertices by going to Mesh Cleanup and Delete Loose. This will help to make your model more optimized and clean. I will also auto smooth the normals and add a subdivision surface modifier. And there we have it, the last snowflake created by using the course method. Now I will rearrange the snowflakes to create a small environment scene, play some lighting and adjust the camera to create the final render. First, I will add an environment texture so that the whole environment contains a default lighting. I add an environment texture node and I open the EXR file which you can find in the links in the description below. I plug it in into the world output and now we can see that we have a default environment with some lighting reflected on the snowflakes. Now I'm going to work on the snowflake material, I'm going to reduce the roughness, increase the transmission to 1 and I'm going to add a procedural material to the snowflake. First I'm going to add a noise texture, I'm going to add a color ramp node and I'm going to plug them together. To add some bumpiness to the snowflake I will add a bump node. Connect the factor to the height and connect the normal to the normal. Be sure to play with the values to get the perfect look you would like the snowflake to have. I am now selecting each one of the snowflakes and adding the same material to them. I will also play with the base color value to add a little bit of a bluish tone to the snowflakes.
Now we don't want the environment to be seen behind the snowflakes. To fix that, I add a mapping and a texture coordinate nodes and I use the rotation values to move the environment to a different view. I will now add a bright and contrast node to make the background darker. Now I will add some sun lamps into the scene so that the snowflakes will get a shiny glowing look. This will also help to get that reflective look we always see on the crystallized snowflakes. As a final step, be sure to position the camera so that the snowflakes are centered. In order to know if the snowflakes are centered, you can go into Camera, Viewport Display and in the Composition Guides enable the third screw. I'm now going to go into Render and Render Image and this is the final result we get after creating the three snowflakes. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe, like and share my content. But wait, there is more! I invite you to join my Patreon where you will find the final project files to every video from my YouTube channel. You will get access to special content and overall help me with general support which will help me continue to provide this kind of content for you. Only for $2 a month. If you are already on my Patreon, I thank you so much for your support and really appreciate everything from you.